Hi, everybody, and welcome to day three and the final day of Global Azure Virtual 2020. My name is Isidora Katanich. I have been with you for the past three days as your virtual hostess. But of course, I have not been doing this alone. I have together with me today, Mr. Rick Hepworth. Please say hello. Hello. Thanks very much, Izzy. Yes, I am indeed Rick Hepworth. I am an Azure MVP for my sins, and it has been my absolute pleasure to co-present this live stream with the wonderful Isadora Katanich for the past couple of days. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rick. So, of course, it's not just you and me here on the feature track. We also have Alex in the green room. We have Carl in the green room. We have a global staff who organize everything, but we also have a huge network uh, of community speakers around the globe who have been delivering content in the past few days, who are still doing so today. And uh, uh, for the people who are just joining us, would you mind, Rick, to quickly show us where do we find all the sessions? How do we filter them? How do we know what's going on around the world? Can Indeed, Izzy. Yes. Yeah, so I'm I'm just sharing my screen so Alex can bring it up. If you go to virtual.globalazure.net, you'll find the um, the main homepage there. I'm fairly confident at this point that the number of speakers and the number of sessions is not going to go up any higher. But you never know. I said that yesterday and got proved wrong. So yeah. right now we've got 248 speakers. We've delivered uh, or are about to deliver 319 sessions, which is just absolutely incredible. Um, I'm not going to bother with the featured track like I have the past couple of days because this is the last day of it. You're obviously watching us now. The most important thing is all those speakers worldwide, right? So if we come up to worldwide speakers, you can see all of the photos of all of the wonderful people that are uh, providing content for us. And if we just pick on one at random, um, if you click on them, it'll bring up their profile. So you can see this is um, Anita. She's doing a session or has delivered a session on quantum computing. And we give you their um, social media details so you can go and follow them on uh, Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn and keep up to date with what they're doing uh, moving forwards. How do you find sessions, though, particularly when there's so many of them? And if you go to the Worldwide Sessions page, we have... Um, uh, a page that the Wesley's built that's pulling data from our, our sessionized feed. Um, it filters by default to only those sessions that are running now or are forthcoming. Anything that's that's already finished, we don't show you. If you want to find those, there's a little tick box down here that says hide sessions when they've ended. Uncheck that. We'll show you everything. Also worth calling out, we pick up your time zone. So we're transforming the times for all of those sessions to be local to you. So there's no confusion over when a session is going to start. If you want to know more about a session, let's just pick on this dealing with Cosmos DB. I can click. Um, it'll give me some information about the, about the session, gives me a bit of bio about the speakers. But the most important thing is that whacking great yellow button there. If you click that, it will take you to the URL for the stream. Yeah. Remember, each speaker is, is delivering their own online content. There are some organized tracks that, that people have put together. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but all of those are going to be different. There's no one place to go. So click that button and you'll be bounced off to Teams or GoToMeeting or YouTube, wherever the speaker's um, set up. Also worth calling out, we're hoping that most speakers will be able to, to record their session and provide those recordings. That's entirely up to them because it's it's their show. Uh, we've been encouraging people to to tweet with the the global Azure hashtag when their session recordings are up, and I know I've seen some of those today. Um, so feel free to have a look and see what what content you can find. And then today, I thought I'd also like to call out that it's not just us. So the global Azure organizing committee, many of whom um, we're going to talk to in a little while have created this umbrella event and they've worked very hard to create things like the feature track, the where on Izzy, but yeah. there are lots and lots of user groups around the world who might have originally been planning to do a physical event and they've also pivoted and they've created their own streams. There's been a, a three day Spanish track, for example, right now there are four tracks running that uh, UK and Ireland have, have organized the Belgians, the, the um, Serbians, people all over the world creating 
curated content and providing all of their information to us in, in the Global Azure team. So I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to them for all of their hard work. And with Absolutely. that, Izzy, back yeah. to you. Yeah, no, we should definitely thank all the communities as this truly is a global uh, community effort. Like we already mentioned in the past few days, it's, it's really from all over the planet. Everybody's chipping in their content, their knowledge uh, from the comfort of their own home as we cannot meet in person. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it's really great to have everybody, everybody sharing. And then, uh, uh, of course, this also involves a lot of time from uh, speakers. We have speakers who are well experienced, who have been doing this for years, who have been doing this uh, in person events as well as online. We have new coming speakers who have just started, who, who got the global Azure uh, stage to, to present their session. Maybe it, it is a little bit easier to start behind the camera instead of like on the big, uh, big stage. So, Rick, I believe you will be talking to one of the speakers of Global Azure Virtual. Um, I will, and hopefully Alex can um, introduce the um, inestimable um, Thomas Maurer now. Turn his camera on. Hi, Thomas. It's really great to have you on the stream. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, for those of you who, who don't know Thomas, he is um, a senior cloud advocate now at Microsoft. And for those of you who are old like me, you've probably been following him for a long time as he's blogged on Windows Server, on Hyper-V, and moving into to, to cloud and management. Um, so Thomas, it's great to have you with us. Hi, Rick. It's uh, an honor to be on the stream. So... Thomas, you've actually delivered um, a couple of sessions as, as part of the, the, the Global Azure Bootcamp, one on Thursday, I think, and one yesterday. How, does, how was that experience for you? How did they go? Yeah, I, I was super excited, to be honest, to be part of this, right? Um, I, was, uh, like, I wanted to take the opportunity to try some new stuff, uh, especially with live streaming instead of just having a recording. So for me, it was like the first time actually doing a presentation or streaming live on YouTube. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. I like what the community has done here. Um, I was surprised also how many people actually are joining my stream, right? I was not in some sort of main stream where people are coming. They just basically picked me out of the agenda or saw the link on social and they joined. And so... No, I had a lot of fun, uh, really, to be honest, um, during these sessions. I also realized that I still have to learn a lot uh, when it comes to streaming. So that, that's interesting because I, I wanted to ask you about that. Obviously, you're an accomplished speaker in person. You've done a lot of conferences and user groups, those kinds of events. How have you found that pivot to delivering content online, not being allowed out of the house, not having the audience interaction? What are, what are the challenges that you've, you've faced in that? Yeah, so so as you're absolutely, I mean, it's, it's absolutely different. And it's kind of like challenging when you're used to speaking in front of a crowd, you get immediate interaction with them, you see if they find something funny or interesting. Uh, and obviously, you don't have the same feeling when you do things online. Um, and I know a couple of like very good speakers out there which are doing like live stream for now for years, right? And so I'm looking a little bit what they are doing, how they're working, um, and how you basically how they interact with each with the audience. And that's also a little bit of my my learnings here is it's going to be very different different when you do it online. Um, you have to kind of like rethink a little bit how you present your content. I don't think there is, you should do it in the same way you would do it in an in-person event. You should try to like be interactive with the audience, like through chat or uh, whatever you have open there, right? Um, so that is definitely one of the changes. However, I have to say what I really enjoy is the reach we have, right? Um, Usually not everyone can afford to like spend, like go away, spend time, buy a ticket for a conference, fly to a conference, drive to a conference or whatever. And this really allows basically people to like just tune in, right? The only thing they need is a mobile device. They can access YouTube or Twitch or whatever streaming platform there is. And I can basically watch the sessions and start the learning process. So that, that I really like. So one of the things I found really challenging over the past few days is um, 
obviously I'm now looking at, at, at you on Skype. We're having a conversation, but over here I've, I've got, um, what's going out on the stream over there. I've, I've got Izzy's notes on what we should be doing for the track. Um, I've got another channel with the YouTube chat that's coming in and, and just keeping my eye on all of that and actually bluntly remembering to talk can be, can be really difficult. How are you coping with, with that? Well, you obviously mentioned audience interaction. How, how, how are you finding that experience? I, I agree with you. Um, first, it, it is very challenging. Obviously, you have to take care of a lot of different things. Um, that said, I mean, there are technical things you can do, like getting some like automation, like these uh, stream decks with buttons and stuff like that, which help you a little bit. But you're absolutely right. Um, there is so much going on. You need to have a look at different screens and like switch and then also on the chat. Um, but to be honest, I believe that when you're on a live stream, when you do a live stream session, um, the audience kind of like knows that and is absolutely fine with you having a break, looking at the chat and like interacting, changing things. Um, I've, that's kind of like my feeling, right? I mean, learning was like, okay, it's very difficult to get it in a format which works. Um, but I, I think the audience likes, likes it that way. They understand that this is a live stream and things can go wrong and people sometimes look at the, another screen and stuff like that. Um, but to be honest, I have huge respect for what you are, you and Isidora are doing for the last three days, basically, um, being on that stream, moderating, um, it, it is a really tough job and I really enjoyed watching the stream. Thank you. I mean, it is tough, but it's, it's kind of infectious, right? So, um, obviously at some point we hope we're, we're going to come out of lockdown. We're going to be allowed back out of, of, of our respective houses. Um, have you been bitten by the bug? Do you think that you want to continue doing this sort of online content and streaming as well as going back to the, the more physical in-person events? Um, I absolutely looking forward also to like be back in, in, in physical in-person events. However, um, I start kind of like enjoying doing this online content stuff. So I'm definitely want to do more of that. Um, obviously I have to learn a lot and still get like improve myself and like how I do things. But um, I want to keep on doing this because the reach you have doing online content is just like you can match that in per in with in person events. And I'm I'm really looking forward to do more and obviously also get better in doing it. Okay. So um Obviously, as with all of our other guests, I've diligently cyber-stalked you for a little while before um, coming on and talking to you. Um, you've been in your role as a, a cloud advocate now for a little over a year. I think it was February you, you marked the anniversary. Um, how are you enjoying that role? And what are the challenges that you've found in that as opposed to, obviously, before that, you were a practitioner, right? You were an engineer, a consultant like me going out and doing stuff. Um how have you found that shift from, from direct customer engagement to the advocacy that, that you now do? Um, it, it is, well, first of all, it's like um, one, it's an absolutely amazing job and an absolutely amazing company. Um, I, I'm not saying that because I'm working now for them, but it's really um, working really well for me. Uh, I'm in a great team. I have the opportunity to work with like some of the smartest people uh, in the tech space, right? Um, so I'm super happy what we can do there. Um, the, the thing I want to mention, like what was a little bit challenging at the beginning is kind of like, um, as we are a global remote team, right? Our whole team is basically across the globe. So we have two people in Australia. Um, we have, I think, two in Canada, two in the US, and Sarah, Lean, and me in, in Europe. And well, again, shout out to the team. It's like amazing being part of that. But it kind of like is challenging when you, you can't go to the office and you don't see your teammates, right? Usually sometimes you meet them in person, you have that contact. So you have kind of like that shift where you need to figure out uh, like doing home office and working from home and then interacting with the team and doing that on a, like in a global scale. Uh, it, it is really um, something we need to figure out. But to be honest, I mean, there's a lot for us to learn, but uh, I think we kind of like working really well together. Um, again, really enjoying being part of that team and also of our organization in developer relations within the Azure engineering uh, team. Um, and again, we have so much. The, the one thing I, I always describe my job is 
like being a kid in a candy store, right? <laughs> from from the seeing all these sessions again, which you can like have probably seen in the live streams uh, over the last couple of days, there are so many cool technologies you can work with. Um, and so there's so much to do and you kind of like need to pick the right ones which work the best for you. Um, so yeah, I, I, as you can, as you hear, I'm really enjoying it. Good. That's good. Um, okay. Well, Thomas, it's been a real pleasure um, speaking to you. Thanks very much for giving your time and, and, and energies into providing content for, for Global Azure. Um, and I'll let you get back to having a relaxing rest of a, of a Saturday afternoon and throw it back to, to Izzy for what's up next, Izzy. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, for your, uh, for your time to be with us. So uh, as Rick has just spoken to, uh, to Thomas how his days have been, uh, uh, we have also closely been monitoring social media under the hashtag what's happening, uh, uh, where are people uh, watching uh, the show, what are they doing, and there's actually one thing that we all noticed, and that's how little photos there were of uh, people, of actually communities coming together at, at in-person events, like from the previous years. Uh, uh, I, I have attended Global Azure now for a few years in person, and we have always been posting photos with our friends, with, with the MVPs, with the community, meeting everybody in person. And that for this year is uh, different. However, uh, Alex, if you can pop up the, the first photo uh, on social media, uh, we did notice there were a lot of mascots. So if we did not have the people, we did have like teddy bears. And as you can see on the first photo, uh, we actually had a, a, a cute little robot with an Azure uh, cap watching the live stream. And if you go to the, to the next one, we had uh, 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 little piggies, <laughs> pink ones. And actually what's funny on the third photo, if you can please show it, uh, Alex, we have been thanked for the, for the amazing catering uh, this year, which of course we did not have, but uh, it, it's funny to see that everybody, of course, now is there's no in-person conference, everybody took care of their own snacks, of their own drinks, uh, uh, yeah, to enjoy the stream uh, for three days. Uh, the next photo, we see a little cute uh, bear, with the, with the Azure phone. And on the next one, again, we see, uh, we see the cute Azure cap. And then when we go to the last photo, uh, number six, we actually do see uh, Carl Otts from the previous year of Global Azure when actually it was an in-person event. And as you can see, they have broken their own record and reached over 300 Global Azure locations worldwide, which were in-person events last year. Uh, of course, we all hoped uh, to break that record again this year. However, due to the current situation, uh, everybody had to shift online. However, that number uh, uh, still is valid because we had over 300 sessions um, um, for Global Azure. Carl, can we, uh, can we see you come out of that green room? Unmute yourself, please. Hello, hello. Hello. So great to have you here with us, uh, Carl, calling in from Finland. Uh, so Carl has been with us all these days in the green room, uh, not visible. Uh, so I think we're very happy to show you because you have put a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, into this. So, Carl, how, how has this been for you? Because like you posted last year, you were very happy to have over 300 locations worldwide. And then this year we're online. How has the shift been for you? Yeah, that's right. So this year we, we are not really dealing with any of those catering or, of, or those Azure passes or anything like that. But we're, we're really focusing on giving the really a platform for all of these uh, local organizers and even these new speakers who haven't any, ever delivered any sessions, uh, not online or physically. Uh, and all of those are now turning into this global uh, marathon of Azure sessions, over 300 sessions and counting, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, it's really interesting to see the shift from all of these simultaneous physical events uh, happening all around uh, during the same 24 hours. Remember, 
uh, previous years we've only held the Saturday event and now we yeah. expanded to three days and also went to online at the same time. Yeah, there was a big, uh, big difference indeed from one day to a, to a three day event. Of course, you wanted to be uh, more inclusive towards everybody to offer the opportunity to go to the conference during the week as well as on the weekend. So it fits, uh, it ties into uh, everybody's, uh, everybody's agenda. So it must have been quite a challenge that suddenly the three days were not there in person and you had to do it online. Um, do you have any stats you can share with us? Like how have the past days looked on YouTube? Uh, how did it go with the views for, for the feature track, of course? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this year we really had this feature track, very meta, talking to you from the feature track about feature track. And the whole live stream is completely new to us. Uh, this is really the first time we are delivering any sort of centralized content. We've been really hands off in a sense that we are kind of letting the organizers do what they, they, they want to do and what they, they believe that their local communities need. Meaning yeah. that if, if, if a location hasn't really been kind of Azure enthusiastic or hasn't really been able to use Azure earlier, they would really start from the beginning, from the very basics of Azure. And for some regions who have been working with Azure for the whole eight years of Global Azure, they are maybe going a little bit deeper. So yeah. this feature track is only for us uh, with delivering this kind of centralized content, all of these uh, six or so sessions that we've had. And uh, if I pull up the numbers here online, we've actually had over three and a half thousand views and over 875 watched hours. Wow, and, and, and rising. And rising, yeah, it's really this hockey stick growth over here. And we have over 500 subscribers all together in this channel, which we yeah. just opened up last week. Yeah, so we went from zero to 500 in, in just a few days. And also for the, for the attendees who might have missed the sessions in the feature track, it's good to know that all sessions in the past two days, they have been recorded. Uh, the green room has cut them into bits and pieces and released all the sessions as separate session on the on a YouTube channel. So if you missed the content or if you would like to rewatch it again, then uh, uh, make sure you follow us on YouTube. Good, and thank you, uh, thank you so much, Carl. Great to see you uh, on the front now instead of just uh, silently uh, in the in the green room. And I would like to hand over uh, to Rick, who will actually have with, uh, Magnus from Sweden who has been part of the global staff, I believe, from the very, very beginning. So, Rick, uh, please, the stage is yours. Indeed. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Izzy. Thanks for talking to Carl, who's obviously finished, so trying to entice him out into public is, is normally tricky. A man, however, who is not shy, who is not backwards about coming forwards, um, who I'm, I'm proud to call my friend, Magnus Martinson. Um, I want to talk to you for a little while about the history of global azure man what it was like in those old days when the world was black and white <laughs> so welcome to the stream good to see you thank you lovely to be with you guys so so uh, nick tell me tell us tell us magnus so you know i think the first global azure was 2013 um, yes. How did you come up with the idea and, and who was in the original gang because obviously the the, the organizing committees changed a bit over the years Yes, it has. Uh, some people have joined Microsoft and so forth, so it has changed a little bit. But honestly, for the first few years, it was the same gang as, as original. And uh, the first thing I want to say about that, honestly, when I, when I start, is that we're doing this because it's so much fun and we can't not do it. We kept coming back year after year to do this again. And, and in that context, to say also that we're really nothing but secretaries in this. We answer a bunch of emails, take a lot of meetings, set up uh, sponsors and stuff. But the real heroes are all of the organizers out there in the world, the hundreds of people that get involved in community activities. Basically, what we can do is give them an umbrella, if you will, a place where everyone is doing it in a coordinated fashion. So in this original gang was... Uh, it started out as a conversation between um, Alan Smith and myself, uh, who is a, a, also an Azure MVP, lives in Sweden. And um, he, he, he lived in Stockholm and I lived in Malmo. And we were kind of fresh as Azure MVPs around that time. And, uh, the, and there was a concept of an Azure bootcamp that already existed. Microsoft had had that as a concept. And then they kind of 
gave up on it. This usually happens with Microsoft initiatives. Nobody carries it forward. So they gave it to the community and nothing much happened. And then we looked at it and said, you know what? Let's do a boot camp. What if I do one here in Malmo where I live and you can do one in Stockholm? And then it's like all of a sudden, what if we did them on the same day? We could share a session or something. That, that would be so cool. And then we said, well, wait a minute. We know those crazy guys over in, in Belgium, you know, Martin Ballio and Mike Martin. And then there's uh, Mike Wood over in the U.S. And, and we started like adding people from left and right. You know, those guys in, in England. And, and what about that Israeli guy? And, and all of these people were literally the Azure MVPs back then. So we had the, the Azure DL, the, the, the distribution list inside of Microsoft for Azure MVPs. And we posted on that. Goodness gracious, everything went crazy from there. The first year we ran Global Azure, it was actually called Windows Azure Bootcamp in the initial. So this is back when, when Azure was called Windows. So we, we, we had 93 locations in, if I recall, 36 countries in the first iteration of the bootcamp. It was absolutely bananas. Everything, we, we had no idea what we were doing. We had an Excel spreadsheet trying to share that between 90 people trying to edit it at once. And it was so much fun. And, and then, you know, from there, it's been growing year, year after year. So in the early days, you, you'd, got, you'd got challenges, you'd got um, kind of activities that you were trying to, to, to do across the, the venues and coordinate globally. Um, yeah. What was the biggest challenge doing, doing those? So um, we, we tried to send swag. We tried to, to send, I don't know, stickers and pens and things around the world. Uh, sponsored, of course, by Microsoft. I mean, this is to, to be like, it's also very important to say this is community, owned by the community, driven by the community, for the community. But obviously, obviously, Microsoft loves what we do, right? Why would they not love what we do? Uh, we're talking about their technology. So they, they're always, they've always been a good sponsor for us. Um, the first uh, feature track speaker that you had on, uh, on uh, Thursday, Mark Brown, was that back then the community owner for the Azure MVPs inside of Microsoft. And so he decided to try to send some swag physical items to all the locations. That is not a good idea. <laughs> There are so many problems with that. People get the, funny enough, people get their address information not complete enough. So when you have something like UPS trying to deliver, all of a sudden they can't find the address. Um, customs uh, all of a sudden wants you to declare and pay taxes for the items. And there's like all kinds of crazy happening. So sending out physical swag has turned, to be, turned out to be a very, very difficult proposition. That was one of the biggest problems we had back then. And that, Cost Mark Brown to probably lose all his hair. He's bald now. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about the rebrand. Um, for 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 this year, I think it was um, new logo, new name. Yes. Was that new team as as well? New new members joining as as others had left. Yeah, there's new new members, and you have. I've been listening to the feature track. I've heard that you've called out the names of the of the people, and I'm sure you'll you'll do that again here today. So. Uh, some members had to leave for various reasons and then uh, other people have joined the sort of the admin group. And we just looked at what we were doing. Now, we love this initiative. We love community and we, we think it's awesome that everyone wants to do a global something bootcamp events. And <laughs> it's been growing. We have a global AI bootcamp. We have a global DevOps bootcamp. We have a global my mother is knitting bootcamp. It's absolutely crazy. There's every kind of bootcamp. And so we looked at it and we felt that honestly, the bootcamp part of the name is what we are the least. A bootcamp kind of, for me still, if, if you think about it, means that you're kind of there for a while, that you spend the night or something. And most locations really don't do that. And it's also not necessarily so that everyone has hands-on things. Some do labs and things, but otherwise, other locations do like a mini conference, purely presentations. So bootcamp kind of didn't fit. And so we got a brand new domain, globalazure.net. It was available. I was like, snag, that's mine <laughs> or ours, as it turns out. But I, get, I got it. It was available for free. So we got that. And then we, we decided to, to just say that we are the name, we are global, we are Azure. The bootcamp part, we just dropped it and 
Alex put together a, a big n new fancy nice logo and then um, that's that's how that went so this year um I was certainly uh, engaged to, to speak in an event, which I'm still disappointed didn't happen. Um, you'd got all of these venues, all of these physical events, and then coronavirus. Yeah. Um, how hard was that as an organizing committee to try and work out what you were going to do? You'd got this great yeah. distributed physical thing, and then you couldn't run it. Tell me yeah. about it. So it was quite chaotic, uh, if nothing else, to, to scramble to get this together. Uh, we decided that we wanted to do something because we felt very strongly for all of our community leaders out there and all the speakers who had literally been gearing up to talk and to deliver their content. And we felt very strongly for everyone and everyone felt um, sad and disappointed. And in this chaotic time of uncertainties and all these things, we didn't want to also just disappear. So we decided quite quickly and just, we just said, we're doing it. We're, go we're going for it. And, and then we started building this site and we started figuring out what it is that we're going to do and putting it together. And, and remember that, you know, for instance, I'm just going to call out one person because I know he's been struggling. Uh, we have one of our, our admin team members uh, down in Spain, David. He's in Spain. And Spain is hit very, very hard with the coronavirus. So for him to be able to, you know, take care of his family, do his work, help his country as an IT professional, set up remote systems for schools and all kinds of institutions, and at the same time do, do some community work, that has been incredibly challenging. However... I, I think this is I take this as a as a wonderful testament to the strength and the, the happiness and the joy of community and the joy of learning that nothing will keep us down. We just said, screw that, we're doing it. And I guess here we are, right? Yeah. Can I quickly add to that that I really did notice uh, in the past few days, of course, talking to the community, following on social media. Literally everybody has been so supportive, uh, yes. uh, patient. And above all, like everybody has been kind. I mean, I've really seen a lot of positive, uh, positive tweets out there. Uh, people really talking about it. They like the virtual uh, edition, and especially like we mentioned in the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. for people who may uh, possibly cannot travel to conferences and go to events, they actually now can be part of the big global Azure where everybody yeah. is uh, joining online. That's absolutely right. So um, to to add to that. It is a privilege to be allowed to work with all of these community members and all these happy people happily learning together, just sharing and caring and, and doing this. Now, the online version is quite different, but it's still absolutely great. And to see all this, this uh, energy of caring and sharing and, and community, even though we can't physically meet and, you know, not everybody likes to hug, but I'm a hugger. So, yeah. <laughs> right. But even though we can't meet, yes, even though we can't physically meet, it's still it's still absolutely wonderful, chaotic and wonderful. And I don't know if if this is the the time to say I'm sure that we'll consider doing something again. We'll see. I mean, we haven't really we haven't landed this yet. We're still in the yeah, well in the back third of it, but we're still in it. We'll see. So, so one one last question that I've, I've got, Magnus. I think. Um, it's fair to say that despite the fact it was very quickly stood up, despite the fact that it was traumatic to organize, um, the online version has been a success. Um, I know personally, I I miss physical events. Thomas Mara was was saying to us just a few moments ago, he, he yeah. does the same. But do you think that maybe if there's a global Azure next year, that you think maybe you might invite a bit of a mix of physical and online because of the success and, and reach of this? Yes. I think regardless, when we come out of this, this uh, lockdown scenario, when we come out of this no travel, and, and it's going to happen. Sooner or later, the world is going to bounce a little bit back and borders will open up again. Physical events will happen again. We don't know if that's you know, after summer or, or after New Year's, actually nobody can tell at this point. What's clear is that the world has changed. R radically, drastically, things have changed in the way we interact. So I believe that we will have a mix in the future 
of virtual events and physical events. And, and I believe we have changed as people. So what I to finish off what I really love about this, so so many communities are, you know, year after year doing monthly events and meetups and all things. No matter, I love to travel, so I, I'm really missing it. Wherever I go, there's always a gentleman or, or a lady coming up to me saying, yeah, you know what, I am organizing global boot camp in so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, thank you so much. And we really love this event. This is the best event we have each year. This, this, I mean, we have many good events, but this one we love the most. And that really spurs us on to continue doing this because there's power in community. There's power in unity. Everybody's doing this together. And now we've added, we've, you know, there's going to be a physical global X, you know, bootcamp 20 X something. We'll see, right? <laughs> Sooner or later, yeah. but then we will add the virtual. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Well, Magnus, thanks very much for joining us and, and talking to us. Thank um, you much. I'm going to throw it back to Izzy now. Obviously, I've been showing you the the Global Azure website every every time in in the stream at the the start and and the, and the bottom of of the stream. Izzy, I think you've you you've got the person there who's been feeding us the stats and the numbers from that website and continually updating it as we've been going, right? Yes, that's right. So I would like to call in uh, Wesley. He's calling in from Belgium. Um, I do see you. Please unmute yourself so I can also hear you. Awesome. Hi, Wesley. Uh -huh. How are you doing? Great. Thanks. It was a uh, so bit of a stressful few days to get everything up and running and also yeah, adjusting everything as we go because we've seen a lot of uh, sessions coming in from around the world. And yeah, yeah getting them all managed and, and visible on the site was sometimes a bit of a stressful moment, but I yeah. think we managed to pull through. Pretty well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that was indeed my question because what we have seen in the past days, uh, uh, more sessions, uh, more sessions were being added, more community tracks were getting added uh, uh, to the website. And mm. how how have you been keeping up? I mean, there's like we said, we had over three hundred hours of Azure content. Uh, how was it for you to like keep up with everything that has been coming in in the past few days? Uh, we've we've been uh, working on the site. Um, mostly Alex, uh, Mang, and, and myself um, to get it up and running. Um, most, yeah, for me it was mostly after work hours. I mean, uh, I'm I'm happy to work in IT, so I can do my job remotely at home because here in Belgium we're of course also locked uh, in our homes. Um, but yeah, every time I, I stopped working, I opened up Visual Studio again and then started working on the virtual side to get that uh, up and running. And then every time I saw something happening and I had a moment to spare, then I just quickly jumped in, yeah. fixed something, pushed it, uh, a new pull request, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, get that done. Well, thank you. It definitely yeah. uh, 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 was good for Rick and myself to show that to the attendees uh, uh, that actually every time we went on air, we had new sessions added to the agenda and we could show that to the community. So. It's really, really uh, appreciated. Thank you, Wesley. And are there are there any stats that, that you can share with us about the website in the past few days? Um, yeah, I hope they're uh, coming on screen right now because uh, I don't really have them by, by hand at the moment. Let me quickly open. Maybe up. the green room uh, can pull them up and you can tell us about it. Yeah, so in the past uh, three days, uh, I, I've started gathering the stats at the 22nd of April. So we've managed to pull about 14,000 visitors to the website uh, across yeah, the time span of the virtual event. Um, in total, we had like 42,000 page views. Um, most of them were happening on Thursday in the evening and yeah. the night because of time zones, of course. Um, and yeah, most visitors seem to be coming from both the United States and Ukraine and actually go Ukraine. I mean, we have almost as many people joining from Ukraine as from the United States. That was cool to oh, see. Oh, wow. Uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we have been seeing, uh, monitoring the stats and in the past few days, we really had people uh, uh, joining from all over the world. Good. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for doing that. We really, uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and then I would like to check back with Rick. 
we would like to pull another person out of the green room who has been supporting us in the past uh, three days with literally getting everything up and running. Uh, so, Rick, please pull him out of that room. I can't. He said no. He's changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he wants us to go to somebody else first. So um, we'll we'll swap, Izzy. You you can talk to the mighty Alex in a moment. Um, I'd actually like to 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 grab. Eldert, who is on the call. Eldert, can you switch on your camera and microphone, please? Hello, my friend. Um, you'll notice I didn't say you, sir. Sorry, I'm English. There is no way on God's green earth I can pronounce that. So would you like to tell people your name? Yeah, Eldert Hodeborg. So thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> so... Eldad, it's actually quite good that we talk to you after Wesley. So, I mean, we've been we've been showing all of of, of, of Wesley's hard work, the the um, itineraries, the session list. But that session list wouldn't exist without the hard work that people like yourself and I know Tom Kirkhove and Magnus and and the rest of the team have been putting in. Um, tell us about what that's been like trying to triage all of those sessions and and, and handle that content that came in quite quickly, really. Yeah. Yeah, so there's been a lot of content coming. Like, we had 300 plus sessions coming in, and basically, we went through all of them, of course. We uh, checked the uh, descriptions. Also, like technical stuff, like, do we, do we have a good, correct URL? Do we, uh, do we have time zone that's correct? Uh, things like that. So, there's a lot of checks that have to be done. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. And what I liked most is that you just see so much creativity. There are just so many great sessions out there. And also, it made this very hard for me because I knew all the sessions that came through. So for me, it was just impossible to set up an agenda because I basically I want to see all 300 plus of them. There's just so much great content out there and so many great speakers. So I really enjoyed going through this. So yeah. So I guess it's it's a little unusual. I mean, you're obviously an organizer of a of a physical conference, and in in that scenario, you know, we all throw our our, our papers at you and and hope that we've written a shiny abstract and and you'd like us to attend. But this was very different because it wasn't really about filtering out sessions, was it? It was really about making sure they all had the right kind of details and things in there. How did you you go about that managing managing all of that on sessionize? Yeah, so indeed, like I said, so the, normally when you have a call for papers, you will uh, filter out, okay, I got 10 slots, I got 300 sessions coming in, I had to filter out to 10 of those. Now, of course, everyone basically got in. And that was also a bit confusing for you that you saw with the first submissions. So people didn't really know it would be like this. So people basically they would do what they always do. They submit a couple of sessions. So we can went back to them, like, do you know that you can actually just uh, do all of these? And a few people actually did like four sessions or something like that. I'll just say, well, let me choose my two for a favorite or something like that. Yeah, so it's a different kind of uh, call for papers, but I did enjoy it. So instead of focusing, okay, uh, I'm going to select 10 of these or 20 or whatever, and you have to build a program. Now you can just look at, okay, what is the session about? Is the description, is it something that you can put up on the website? Uh, like, like I said, is it in the correct time zones? Do we have a URL? Because of course, we are just putting this up, but you need a URL for this. So... Uh, we need to make sure that we can actually see what's, uh, what URL is being used. Is it on YouTube? Is it on Teams? Uh, we actually go to the URL, of course, to see, okay, does it actually work? Do we see something happening? So it's more on the technical uh, level that you're uh, looking instead of uh, on a session level. So it's a bit different, but I did really enjoy it. And we'd, we'd got... Um track and, and, and language details that I, I'm not sure whether they covered all sessions or, or not. Was that something that, that you and the team arranged sessions into tracks or did you encourage speakers to try and self-nominate for, for those? Yeah, so we had a couple of tracks where uh, actually like communities like uh, Serbia, like the UK, like Spain, they have just their own uh, user group that's running a track. And basically, we asked them if you or we told them if you want, we can have you add some you on this website, give you some more traction. Uh, and basically, that's what, like Magnus said, it's all about bring, bringing the podium for the different speakers for the community. And that's what we also try to do with our the website, like bring in the ever uh, some extraction to people that want to speak. So uh, basically, we had a lot of those submissions where uh, they're like the French or something like that. They will have their own track. We just put it up. They will, can say, okay, this is in uh, French language. And of course, you also have indigenous individual speakers that also might be saying, okay, I'm a French speaker. I wanted to do this in French. And then we do just say, show this on the website and people can just filter on this. 
So if you're a French person, you might just want to see some French sessions because that's what you're comfortable with. Or you can just say, I want to see everything and maybe in English or maybe another language. And so on the, your own session, we had the, there was various speakers that actually had a session twice, once in their own language and then once in English. And so they actually did the same session twice, but in different languages. So basically that way you have, everyone can be involved. And I really enjoyed that. Okay. So Elder, I, I know that also you've, you've actually delivered at least one session. Actually, have you done more than one in, in, in the past few days? I did. I actually did two of them. So I did one yesterday and did one today. And, and how have you found the experience of, of presenting online and engaging with that online audience? Yeah, so I will agree with Tom here. It's a completely different than doing this in person because now instead of talking to an audience, having that interaction, so seeing how the audience reacts and maybe adjust your talk on that, now you're talking to your screen, of course. So you have to think about, okay, there are actually people out there and I had to make this engaging instead of just because sitting there and just doing your talk. You have to think about how do I make this engaging? So make sure you still make your jokes, but also work with your hands. Make sure you can bring some eye contact to the camera. Make sure you have some pauses in there so people can actually just like read slides, things like that. And you constantly have to think about there's someone out there that's actually looking at this and doing like that. So it's completely different from doing this on stage. I do like it. Uh, I like on stage better in person events. I still like it better, but here you have a completely different kind of audience. So I actually noticed that I had a lot of people that came up afterwards that sent me messages from like Asia or from like India, places I have never been before and people that have never seen me before. And now all of a sudden you can also reach these people and those people can also see your session. So I like that you have a whole, a whole lot more traction all around the world. So people that normally would not be able to attend my session can now actually attend this session. So I will probably do, be doing this kind of things more. Uh, I do also hope that we can actually do it in person and just do both of them. Okay, well, that's, that's really great to hear. Well, thank, thanks so much for talking to us, Elder. I, at this point, that the shy guy in the green room is actually going to agree to come onto camera and unmute himself. Um, Izzy, I'm going to hand back to you, and, and you can try if you can pull, pull the masterful <laughs> Alex into the Alex. stream, right? Alex, please, please, pretty, 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 please come out of that green room. Must, but this is going to be confusing. Because, um, I do see you. I don't hear you. You don't hear me? You should hear me, actually. Alex, louder. You don't hear me? Really? That's but better. now I start hearing you. There you go. Yeah. Now I have perfect. to be quiet. <laughs> Absolutely. So. For me, I, I have been seeing you, of course, in the past few days. Uh, 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 I think even more than my own boyfriend, because we have all been on this call for like five, six hours per day, uh, uh, doing our tech checks. And even after the sessions were done, we were still online, recap, uh, learning from each other, uh, talking. Uh, 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 and like I said, we have been talking, but you actually have been like mixing and managing everything in the background. Can you uh, uh, tell our audience, like, what have you been doing in the past few days? Oh, I haven't I, really. Um, and this reminds me, actually, happy birthday to your boyfriend, because he was celebrating yesterday when he was also the red drink a couple of sessions, wasn't he? Yes, that's um, right. <laughs> that was the world's yeah. smallest birthday cake, though, Izzy. That looked really mean, just that little tiny that slice. That was just a piece of the cake. <laughs> So the, for the, to answer your question, for the past three days, we were super busy and full hands on um, making sure that the stream will go smooth. And hopefully it, had, it went smooth enough, despite all the hiccups with speakers using Wi-Fi and, <laughs> well, whatever they had at their hand, I guess. Um, truth be told, this entire working from home and COVID situation is not amazing. Uh, yeah. Everyone is trying to cope with it, right? And at the end of the day, we're just making a lot of compromises. And this itself is a compromise. Uh, you got to keep in mind that we have been planning for global Azure, just global Azure, for over a year now. Um, Magnus mentioned about the logo. It is probably around that time last year, this time last year, that we started using the logo. And this actually reminds me, I've prepared um, another button. By the way, keep, people keep on asking me, how do you do this? I'm, I'm behind the buttons, and here's the button keypad that I'm using. And, Gonna click this button, boom, and now on YouTube, you, you don't see it. But people on YouTube now see a picture, uh, which I've taken several months ago, of our logo 
print it out as low as as uh, stickers because we had stickers as well this yeah. is going to turn out to be the most valuable sticker ever because there are only 100 pieces of them were, were ever printed and they were never actually used right because the, yeah. they never, never turned around for the global azure virtual we had a different logo uh and we were literally planning for this and i do want to thank several people for all their effort and everything they've put in uh and that they even includes you rick because it was what september last year when you were all hands-on and on, on booth duty at ignite answering questions to somewhere around 20,000 people, I guess, showing up at our booth and asking about Global Azure and what is this and how do I get involved and so on and so forth. And we have seen that interest and desire in people to um, just be engaged and share their knowledge or share any effort whatsoever to create some sort of a community presence in their very remote well, community, wherever it is. We have people starting from Japan, uh, we have people organizing Global Azure in Nepal. We have literally everywhere around uh, people interested in just yeah. have this natural desire of sharing knowledge. I also want to give a big shout out to the other admins who are not on this call, regretfully, for various reasons, either time zone. Uh, as you have mentioned, Martin is based in Australia. Um, others who may have other personal engagements or just the COVID situation, like Magnus said, David is full hands-on with all his engineering experience and knowledge, trying to share back like any good social entrepreneur does. And we have Schalke in the Netherlands, who regretfully is also, also not, not in this call. Everyone has been so, so interested in making sure that Global Azure Virtual will happen. And we do, just don't cancel a Global Azure because we just want to make sure that we are, um, well, you know, all hands-on. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, yeah. Like you indeed said, you've seen in 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 Nepal, we've seen in Nigeria, in India, uh, in Greece, in Serbia, Netherlands, literally every corner of the planet. And somehow, I even feel, although we are disconnected in person, this virtual edition did bring the communities really together in the past few days. I mean, I everybody so. Even people from, from one country were following tracks from another country, which normally you would not be doing at an in-person event. I mean, you would go probably to the event which is near you, and those are the sessions you follow. And now, actually, there was an opportunity, also like Elder to mentioned, he had people watching from countries where normally they would not see him present, right? So I really think it has been a very... Uh, uh, inclusive, interesting experience uh, for everybody to to run this virtual uh, virtual. Absolutely, event. I couldn't agree more. And just honestly, I think the biggest shout outs goes to the communities and the local organizers and local leaders, really, who had this interest in actually putting something together. Wesley have men has mentioned previously that we have quickly stood up the the website and we have quickly reorganized everything. And this also reminds me to give a shout out to John Kirkovi and, uh, and Elder, obviously, who has previously spoken, because they were all hands on and making sure that those sessions will be approved and um, guiding everyone who was interested in putting something together for Global Azure Virtual. And indeed, the, the website was very quickly stood up. And in fact, yeah. the speakers we had for the past two days can confirm and validate that we have sent them the meeting request because they're our friends. So we reached out to our friends and we didn't take any official or any formal approach to this one. And we told them, um, so, you know, next week um, we might have this thing. Are you interested in speaking or not? And it was, well, to some point ridiculous, right? Because we only had so, so much time to prepare for everything. But yeah. we did the best we could and hopefully the audience will enjoy it. There's definitely yeah. so many things we have learned and we'll make, we're going to make sure that we're, we're, we're learning from that. And even though Magnus was not was, was quite shy on answering the question Rick had, uh, we most likely will have in the future a follow up um, virtual in one way or another. So, yeah. Alex, can I just chip in and ask? So, I know that the, I mean, you and Carl have never done um, a, you know a, a multi person stream like this before. You've obviously learned a lot. Um, mm -hmm. uh, have you got any plans to maybe try and share? your learnings and your experience? Because I, I know that people have been asking and, and people would genuinely appreciate knowing maybe how they could do something like that themselves. Um, look, probably a couple of years ago, as you recall, we were community reporters at Ignite. 
um, in Orlando. And back then we started both gearing up, just buying a bunch of stuff so that we could have our own online presence after Ignite at the same time. And that has been one of my own personal desires. I wanted to start an online presence. Now, obviously, when you're behind the screen, you don't really have a presence, literally, right? Um, but the plan is actually before virtual, global Azure virtual, and probably after feel things cool down, um, to start a series of videos on various topics. I've had a conversation with Rick Campbell, the, the illustrious Rick Campbell, and I've asked him, how do you find your topics? And how do you make sure that you have a good delivery so that people get engaged and are interested? And I have found that with all the learnings of how do you put together a virtual stream and how it all works and the technicalities behind it is actually something people, is, people are interested in. So this is probably going to be the, first, the very first topic. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Alex, for, for everything you've done in the, in the past few days. And uh, we, we should be doing this again. But I truly hope we will also be seeing each other in person soon. So before we start looking at, at our highlights in the feature track the past few days, Ray, could you quickly uh, 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 pull up the website so we can one more time shine the lights uh, on our communities wide who are still delivering sessions uh, 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 this afternoon, this evening, tomorrow morning, of course, depends what time zone uh, you are in. Um, just show us what we still have coming up. I, I can. Sorry, I thought I was already sharing my screen and I've realized that I wasn't. The joys of live broadcasting. Right. So um, Carl also asked me to call out some of these numbers again. So um, yeah. we've done three days. We've had, I, I'm not sure that that 248 actually includes the, the guests that we've had. So we've got over 250 speakers, right? We've, we've got well over 300 sessions, 319 plus sessions worldwide coalesced into one event. And that's absolutely been fantastic. Um, Virtual.globalazure.net, go there and you can find out what's going on now. Um, you can click on worldwide speakers and you can find a great list of people. I uh, just spotted Amy, so I shall click on her. Click on a speaker. You can see their bio. Um, we show you their social media info so you can follow them um, and a link to the sessions that they're doing. Um, and if I just close that down, if you want to look more at what um, sessions are available in our um, worldwide speakers track, he said, uh, I hate full screen browsers. Come back. Yeah. Worldwide sessions. Every time I move my mouse to the top of the screen, it's 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 like it, the menu runs away and yeah. it takes me back, to, <laughs> puts the menus back instead. There we go. Worldwide sessions. OK, so showing off the, all the hard work that Elder and, and Tom did uh, behind the scenes, filtering all of those speakers. Wesley's talking to the APIs at Sessionize um, and he's pulled out all of those sessions. We are automatically filtering. So uh, we only show the sessions that are on now or upcoming. And let's face it, there's still quite a lot of time left in the day when you take into account yeah. all the time zones. There's loads of sessions coming up. Um, we filter all of those and present them in your time zone. We're reading that from your web browser. Um, we touched on languages and tracks. You can filter those down the left-hand side should you want to. If you want to find out more about a session, just click on it. It'll drop you into the session. Um, give you some information about the speaker, some information about the session, and the most important thing, the big yellow button, click that and we'll bounce you off to the URL that the speaker gave us for their stream. It could be YouTube, it could be Teams, it could be Skype, it could be, we've seen GoToMeeting, all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, We're awesome. hoping that speakers will make their slides and recordings available. Um, some have already started uh, tweeting out on the, the Global Azure hashtag about those, so watch Twitter. Uh, and stuff will come up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rick, for uh, for shining the light on the communities and the speakers uh, who are still going to present in the next couple of hours. Speaking of hashtags, uh, what was really fun is in the in the past couple of days, and I truly hope it will go on today, is we had the hashtag Global Azure Mug, where we actually asked the community to share photos uh, uh, of their mug shots. We and did. we have seen, uh, uh, I believe, over 100 uh, at least 
uh, tweets going uh, on with photos. Do, do, do you want to show us a few? I, I do. I'm, I'm sharing my screen as, as we speak. Um, yeah. So there's um, yeah. so there's a, a a really great one there from Chris Gill that says says you got this on there as well. Um, yeah. I I still like the one that that you shared, Izzy. That's that's <laughs> there with your your Chewbacca mug and the, yeah. the global Azure sign. Um, so it's been really great to see this engagement. It's been really nice, and I've got to call this one out, Lisa, who's she's involved with the the, the UK and Ireland stream. Um, yeah. She's got a tiny bottle of bubbly ready for when the stream ends at, at, at 5 p.m. UK time, which is actually about now. I really hope that they've had as excellent a time as we have. Thanks very much for all of you that have posted in that hashtag. It's been great to, to see your mug shots. Um, and Dwayne, I'm sure you really are one awesome dad. Thanks very much for doing it. Cool. Awesome. So well, photos and just go to your Twitter and uh, search for Global Azure Mug. And also we do want to ask you, keep sharing your photos. Uh, we will be monitoring the hashtag and of course, uh, retweeting your posts. So lastly, uh, what I would like to do is I would like us to uh, look back at some of the, of the video highlights in the past few days. Now the green room has uh, processed all the content that we had in the past few days uh, on the feature track. Uh, they cut some bits and pieces and they made a compilation. I have not seen it yet. So I really hope it's not going to be like some bloopers or uh, uh, I don't know. It's like as much as a surprise for me as it is going to be uh, for you. So in the green room, could you please show us uh, uh, what you have created? Hi, good morning, good day, and good evening, everybody worldwide. Welcome to the Global Azure Bootcamp, the virtual edition. So I tweeted yesterday um, a picture of myself with, with my mug, um, and it's great to see that over the, the, the past few hours, we've, we've had a few people tweeting out, a principal program manager with the Cosmos DB team, the inestimable Mark Brown is joining us all the way from, from Seattle. How are you today, Mark? And we are ready uh, for our next speaker who is here. We have the one and only Sami Laio here on the feature track of Global Azure Virtual. Now, if I go on stage in, on, in Australia and I say, I had to take antivenom for a wiper bite to be able to present here, Australia has 10 of the most venomous snakes in the world. <laughs> so everyone looks at me like, oh my God, he's insane. Like, um, And our next speaker um, asked me not to give him a big intro, so <laughs> I'll try not to. What I would say is I've been an Azure MVP for, for quite a few years now, and, and, and Vishwas Lely, who's going to join us next, is one of the Azure MVPs that I have the, the, the most respect for. Um, he's, he's a longstanding member of the community. He's a great expert in his field. He's also incredibly modest. Okay, so we're just about on, on time, Vishwas. Just before I, I let you go and, and say thank you, um, tomorrow we've got Brendan Burns on, and I just wondered if you had, um, you know, if, if I could say you could ask one question of Brendan, what would that be? And I'll ask it on your behalf tomorrow. That'd be awesome. Please do that. I, I, let, me, let me pick one out of five or ten questions that I have for Brendan. Let me, uh, let me pick one. Thank you so much. And we also had a day two. Uh, can you please show us the compilation? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Dobre jutro, dobre dan, goedemiddag, goedenavond. It depends where in the world you are calling from because we truly are a global community today. And that's an yeah. awesome photo of a very gregarious chap there with his mug. Um, and we'd also like to call out this one from Karthik. Uh, we've been joined on the call by um, by Brendan Burns. Um, so Brendan, hi, thank you for, for joining us today. And uh, actually there's a, there is, you, can, you can't see it, but in another corner of the basement, there's a robot over there. Today he's here to talk about Dapper. Um, Mark Fussell, your principal program manager of the Azure Incubations team. Welcome very much to our live stream. We have the Azure Stack team here with us live on the call. I was looking at how many um, how many sessions we've got, and the number went up before my very eyes. What you might have noticed was in the chat channel for that Azure Stack Hub session, um, effectively the, 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 the Stack, the data center MVPs were out in force chatting with each other. Um, Lisa at the Edge arrived and tweeted her mug just before she joined the chat, um, which is one that I particularly like. Um, 
because it's a it's a witch theme mug and it says have a bewitching day we might be finished with our feature trek for tonight but that does not mean that it's the end of global azure as we do have a truly global community that is still presenting sessions and sharing their knowledge with you thank you so much for sharing i'll make sure to watch afterwards uh, everything what has been shown in the past few uh, past few minutes as i still have no idea Anyways, with that, we are coming to an end of Global Azure, the feature track. It has been an absolute pleasure uh, to be doing this in the, in, in the last couple of days. I'm, I'm actually going to miss these guys tomorrow as we have spent, like I said, so much time together in the past few days. It was a pleasure to co-host this uh, together with Rick, who I have to say should win an award for the best dressed host we had on an IT conference. Uh, how many bow ties were you wearing in the past few days? So I think the answer to that actually is not enough. Um, <laughs> if, if the green room hadn't been so harsh and given us a short break, I would have changed between sessions. Um, so I think I've, I've, I've only done four for each of the four days that we've actually done content because we did the, the pre-day. Um, I think I'm, I'm most proud though of this one, which is my um, inclusion and, and diversity bow tie. Um, but, you know, you, you've got to make an effort, right? It's, it's important to look good. And Absolutely. This What's is the best uh, so I can do. So maybe just a just quick last question. What's the story? How, how, how do you get all these bow ties? Ah, so um, my lovely wife, um, some time ago, we were doing some live streaming in the UK, and, and me and a very good friend, Andrew Fryer, started wearing bow ties. Um, my wife, Sarah, now, every time I do a conference, every time I travel to a new country, she buys me the flag of that country is a bow tie so that when I speak, Aww. I can wear the bow tie of the country that I'm speaking in. That's so sweet. Okay, that, that's really nice. Well, let's hope, Rick, that soon enough we are all out of this lockdown and that everybody stays safe and healthy. Also, everybody who is watching, I truly hope from wherever in the world you are that you and your loved ones are doing fine uh, uh, and that we will be traveling soon again so that Rick can actually collect more bow ties from countries in the world. Absolutely. So with that, dear everybody who has been watching, all the, uh, I would like to thank all the speakers, uh, all the attendees. Uh, uh, as I've never done this before, I would like to thank my mom uh, also. And uh, most importantly, I would like to thank the global staff because, of course, they have been behind uh, behind this for a long, long time. It's not just this three days. What you see on air, this is literally a year long of uh, uh, community efforts going on to actually make this happen. So I will point them out again. Uh, David Rodriguez in Spain, Carl Otz in Finland, Alex Mang in Romania, Martin Abbott in Australia. Magnus Martinsen in Sweden, Schau Kjezal in the Netherlands, uh, Wesley Cabus in Belgium, uh, of course, many others, Eldert, who has been helping us uh, uh, with Sessionize, Rick and myself. And um, with that, yeah, I hope to see you all next year, whether it be in person or virtual or even before at other conferences. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us.